In the recent years, the influx in space sim type games has brought us some gems and some stinkers. More often than not, people look at that one niche good thing that each game does better than the rest. So that's where we put our focus. What's the angle? What's the gimmick? Yet, people are willing to forgive, sometimes frankly, some amazingly bad things, as long as that one gimmick works and fills their pants with moist liquids. Well, too bad. Today we'll go over the worst sins of the space sims, so that we as the society can move on to better understanding as to why Yamex is God. Uh, I mean, uh, better games. Yeah, yeah, yes, that's right, better games. But before that, if you want to support the channel a little bit more, well then check out the merch store down below in the description. All the best merch is there. As the games have come a long way in those 30 or so odd years, we have witnessed a sort of a standardization of uh, common features across any genre. So it's nearly no surprise that the first thing that the player would see ought to be either as good or better than the most games. The user interface. Despite Space Sims being the backwater drainage pipe equivalent of gaming, it's by no means excuse to be both lazy as well as purposely obtuse when giving your players the user interface. Worst offender today would be definitely Egosoft's X4 and Star Citizen. Now, while Star Citizen is more like a 20-something girl traveling everywhere trying to find itself, X4 on the other hand sticks to its guns and says, This is UI and you will like it! Sorry, but no, I know space sims are a part of the simulator family, where user interface and user experience often is met with shit-smeared handshake. But by fucking gods, it's the reason why most people don't bother picking up space sims. Your fucking UI is like a burn victim! Also, I blame EVE Online for normalizing this. You show these youngsters that it's okay, dammit! Another sin, or rather interesting phenomenon I've witnessed in the most prevalent space sims of late, the tendency to shove out massive near-infinite galaxies thanks to procedural generation, that rather than focusing on having the gameplay, you push the limits of the sandbox. And I get it, space is vast, but that does not mean that your gameplay also has to be as empty feeling. Elite Dangerous perfectly shows this off, as the game literally has over 400 billion systems, with even more celestial bodies within them. However, what happens in more than 99.9% of them, and I shit you not, I'm being very generous here, is either nothing or very little. Understand, you don't need a big sandbox for your game to feel big, get it? And speaking of procedural generation, while space sims are not the only games out there, they certainly seem to have developers that more and more try to rely on algorithm-based content generation. Be it planets or systems, it's just so easy to write a bunch of if statements and watch quote-unquote content pop into existence. See, I too make content. Sometimes I do it in the toilet bowl. However, just because it's quick and easy doesn't mean it's good. Point is, with the games like Elite, No Man's Sky, Earth Analog and countless others, the love for handcrafted content has gone, it seems. Yes, it takes time, but it's worth putting in the elbow grease, crafting the more commonly played play spaces. Surprisingly, Star Citizen would be kind of a good example here. Oh god. But let's zoom out a little bit. Space sims by nature are a niche within a niche, basically. A space-based flight simulator or dogfighting game most of the time. A common mistake I notice a lot of them making is going even deeper on something specific. See, I as a creator too have noticed this. While I know perhaps about one specific thing a lot of information and I feel even compelled to create something super specific, I stop myself. You do need to appeal to more people rather than less. Simply put, space sims are already deep enough and going any deeper on mechanics won't really benefit anyone. Yes, a detailed flight mechanic might be a really cool thing, but you know what would appeal to more people? Not flying. Yes, let's say an FPS gameplay. Take EVE Online or X4, for example. Both focus so heavily on the trading gameplay that both have lost track on what could benefit the game more. Say, a better UI or altogether a new feature. And yes, I know EVE Online has a great track record on that, but I blame that on execution, dammit. 
Which brings us to the opposite end. Let's call this the No Man's Sky Syndrome. Trying to be too appealing has its own negatives. See, space sims are really a subdivision of flight sims, so to some extent there has to be a certain depth to mechanics to have the niche appeal, but my story here goes for not getting the tunnel vision, which literally is the 90% of the case in the games, while however attempting to pull back from the simulator background in the case of No Man's Sky may do more harm than good sometimes. Take Outer Wilds as an example. It too tries to go too simplistic and due to it loses out on being taken a bit more seriously. But what about the simulator part? Well, I already mentioned this, but the one thing I simply cannot stand this niche of a niche genre is due to the tunnel vision. You overcomplicate your game. I could even say that Space Sims are a programmer's game. In fact, Earth Analog is exactly that. But even then, generally speaking, every single one with exception of maybe No Man's Sky and Outer Wilds seem to overcomplicate their mechanics or features. I usually like to say that space sims have to be complex, yet not complicated. This means that you have to have depth of your features, but they need not, nay, must not, be difficult to grasp. It's much like PC building. Yes, it may be an involved process, but if you, like me, love building PCs, well, we can together say it's easy, more or less basically like LEGO. In fact, LEGO is a good example. A good game will consist of many simple little blocks. As an example, take, let's say, ship thrusters. Yeah, they have all sorts of stats, but the way the game tells you about them or simply lets you use them is, well, easy. It makes the ship go forward and back, and that's about it. Some do faster, some do slower, but all of them are interchangeable, which in turn makes the ship customization a little bit more depthful. You don't need to put individual thruster materials or parts together to make it work. There's really no need for that. Or that these ship thrusters can only be used on these ships and blah blah blah. Kerbal Space Program, as a matter of fact, is the perfect example on how to make complicated things simple but yet complex. Speaking of details and explanations, here's my old bugbear of Space Engineers. The game basically used to work like this. You start the game as a newbie and hope that the game, like a normal fucking game, would explain the things and, you know, you would have a tutorial to get you rolling. Well, too fucking bad. You're tossed into some random scenario with all the features unlocked immediately and you just do the thing. Or worse, you're told to go watch fucking YouTube for tutorials. Then, Elite Dangerous, for the longest time, while having a very, very basic tutorial, simply shoves you out in the cold, dark space and lets you fend for yourself, like an orphan after you reach the age of 18. Star Citizen doesn't even have that much, nor does a lot of other games in this little circle jerk of a genre. It's like a fucking plague that almost every time you have to have played the same games the developer did, cause God fucking forgive if you dare to come into this game and ask too many newbie plebeian questions like you've never seen the fucking dildo while rummaging through your mom's underwear drawer. Uh, where was I? Oh, right, the tutorials. That fucking space Jesus shitting Christ. How really dangerous pissed me off back in the day of not having a decent tutorial, nor later having any explanation of what the fucking stats or statistics meant. Fucking seriously, if you're going to make your overcomplex, overcomplicated space farting dildo ships, at least take the time out of your busy fucking schedule and explain what the fuck does the maximum combat flight throttle power level means, as well as how the fuck it impacts me. Do I need to go get vaccinated before I even touch it? Or do I have the death curse now, forever, and I need to find a level 20 cleric to heal me? Fucking space sims, man. But speaking of sins, oh boy, this might be the biggest one of literally all of them. Elite, Star Citizen, No Man's Sky, Eve, Rebel Galaxy, Export, literally every single one has the grind. The need to repeat simple tasks more times than needed, so that you can upgrade or finish building and doing anything. While this is a wider problem in modern game design as a whole, I noticed that space sim developers seem to be even less creative than your average game dev. And, as always, I say, a mark of a lazy or uncreative designer is to just put an extra zero at the end of everything. I'm a designer! 
Seriously, you fucks are making a space game, and you know space is vast and empty. Most of the time your players will be spending traveling or searching for information about your obscure mechanics online. The last thing we need is to repeat your boring mission three more times. See, there is a reason why 200 hours played in Elite Dangerous or Star Citizen is called I just started playing newbie level. I shit you not, I've seen so many comments on my videos and streams going exactly like that. Even some people saying that after 500 hours they barely know how to land. Traveling already takes a lot of the time, and the grind extends it even further. Funny that a normal single player game is at most 100 hours, like The Witcher 3, and most MMORPGs you learn in about 20 to 40 hours, but the space sims? <laughs> That's not even a pinky toe dip in the ocean of travel times and repetitive missions. So, at the very least, cutting out the grind should be a good idea. You already get to keep the travel time as the play time. What more do you want, devs? But overcomplicated is not only mechanics sometimes. Due to sci-fi settings, some developers decide to go, well, what they think is artistic. In reality, they make the most overcomplicated, overconvoluted, nonsense scribblings that are known as the game's lore. EVE Online springs to mind right away, right after Elite, again Star Citizen and the artsy fartsy indie bullshit that is No Man's Sky frankly infuriates me at times. Then Starpoint Gemini trying to make some kind of a Mass Effect wannabe story which devolves into verbal diarrhea while the gameplay is begging for attention like the oldest child in the family. However, despite my distaste for the modern open-ended nonsense endings like the No Man's Sky or the never-ending travesty that is Elite's story dumpster. Somehow, all of them are charming, well in the flaming dumpster kind of a way. So don't take them seriously, you will only waste your time. Just sit back, enjoy the smells and the light show. It's basically like listening to World's Worst Dungeon Master trying to sound cool. Instead, they just read off their furry fanfiction adaptation of Twilight or something. Oh, and here's a gripe that you may find aggravating of not having. HOTA SUPPORT, or rather not having HOTA SUPPORT. Well, the thing is, I am that kind of a pleb that always flies with a keyboard and mouse, so I don't care about this particularly too much. However, considering that uh, these are supposed to be simulators, well, specialized hardware and the so-called DAD SUPERIOR SPACE SIM RIG GAMING THING has to be supported. Fact is, people do expect support for the real controllers. Uh, well, not this garbage. Seriously, No Man's Sky, you brought in literally everything. Crossplay, VR, multiplayer, and more, but still no real HOTA support? The fuck? But finally, the sin that modern games all too often are ready to commit. Going early access. Yes, betas, alphas, simple early access is far too common and also far too accepted today. Some developers know that if you put an early access title on the game and release the broken piece of shit that barely works, as long as you promise the world to the players, you will still get people buying the stuff. And no, surprisingly, my first example is not Star Citizen. It's Hellion. The fucking game that was in early access for a long time and one day fizzled out. And now the devs with the money you gave them are off to make probably some other game. While Hellion itself sits in the steam for those that got it, unfinished, never to be touched again. Others find that as long as you put on early access title on there, there will be idiots in the crowd that will defend their broken overpriced bullshit while developers can just shit out constant garbage in an unfinished state. So as long as they put up some description on how they're working on things, so everything's fine, right? Fact is, yes, there are some dedicated games with good developers using early access in the past, bringing out eventually amazing work. Look at Subnautica, for example. But when it comes to space sims, well, frankly, only Kerbal, Space Engineers and Elite springs to mind as something that has used early access or that type of designation and eventually had released, in timely manner, their finished work. Most of all, Star Citizen, of course, Star Citizen really is the big elephant in the room. There is no escaping the fact that it impacts already, not only what the subgenre does, but the gaming as a whole, and moreover, crowdfunding. 
It is why we must be hard as customers and consumers about these early access titles that use and abuse them. It's ripe ground for all sorts of shit. And with that, that's the biggest sins of Space Sims. Ah, boy, did that title rhyme well. Anyhow, there are more smaller issues like microtransactions and prevalence of that and design principles as well as artsy-fartsy styles. But I'll leave it for the perhaps next time, or at least up to you to discuss it in the comments. So let me know what are the sins you cannot stand among your favorite sim games, not necessarily the space-related ones. Frankly, for me it's definitely the overcomplicated nature, but all you have to do is to be complex. So, if you enjoy my colorful work and wording, perhaps you would be inclined to help me out in turn. So, check out my Patreon, every little bit helps. Seriously, it really does. Or perhaps check out my merch store or other useful links down below. For now, that's about it. Oh, and if you wondered why I didn't mention anything about graphics and anything like that, well, it's a niche of a niche of a niche. Most dev teams are at best maybe 10 people, so I didn't expect world from them. I mean, I'm not a Star Citizen zealot after all.